Well, there's been a lot of discussion at this conference about personalizing care and then also how to fit molecular diagnostics into the equation. I have with me now Dr. Iman Rizik, who is the president of McKesson Health Solutions. And really, you're the perfect guy to answer this question, Dr. Rizik, because you, that is your area. How these kinds of tests are typically considered expensive tests. So Correct. do people need to be concerned about the cost when they're trying to fit this into the health healthcare equation? Well, yes, absolutely. Usually any technology, when it's discovered in the beginning, is generally expensive. But I think we ought to look at it, whether it's expensive as a test, but is it also a way to have more targeted health interventions? And maybe the total cost of managing a disease can be cheaper. So I'll give you just a couple of examples. We now know that based on our genetics, we respond to drug therapy differently. Uh, a lot of the new expensive drugs could be given sort of to many patients and whether or not they're going to work, it's sort of a trial or an experiment. Now we could target exactly which patients will benefit from that drug. Also, if we can target their molecular disposition to disease, we could begin the preventive cycle uh, where we know someone has a higher incidence of a cancer or of a specific disease. We could begin to change their lifestyles, change the way that they interact with their environment and begin to really manage their life. So although the test itself is expensive, but the impact on the total health care cost is probably quite significant. So the impact on the long-term outcome and decision-making process is, is, is a big one. Correct. Long-term mm -hmm. and short-term. Short-term in terms of giving a drug that's very expensive, that really has mm -hmm. no effect, so that's a short-term, and also in terms of the prevention strategies, that's more of a long-term. And diagnostic testing would be able to determine that more efficiently. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. What is the payer response uh, to this? Do our people in that community are they aware that of the of the benefits of looking at this more seriously? That's actually a really good question because we're, we probably have a situation where the science had ex, uh, sort of expanded and accelerated so quickly and our administrative processes are a little bit behind. So I think right now the science is, is moving at a rapid speed. However, many of these tests do not have codes. Uh, we can, we, there's no way, there's no uh, information on who would benefit from the tests. We're trying to do that together in McKesson with other organizations, academic organizations. So I think the payers are sort of, they understand that they have to, they're, sta they're, they're, they're watching, they're observing it very carefully, and they're trying to figure out what's the role of reimbursement in those tests. We spoke a year ago, Dr. Correct. Rizik, and so much was so uncertain at that time. Correct. Is the way more clear now or there's just more confusion because not a lot has changed? No, I actually think it is more clear. I believe that the payers are very uh, aware of the impact of these diagnostics. I think the number and the volume of these tests has grown so much that it's captured their attention. Uh, also, these tests are not quite that automated right now, so there's an opportunity to decrease the cost by automating it and making sure that the physician, which is the other component of this healthcare, gets the information to prescribe or to suggest this test to their patients mm -hmm. at the point of care. Okay. So right now, I think the, the payers are aware of this, but it's not just the payers. It's the payers, it's the patient, it's the physician. It's those three getting some level of alignment. Okay, and your final message to, to people here at the conference, what are you leaving people with? Well, I think the most important thing is that the science is there. The, the value of diagnostic, uh, molecular diagnostics is very valuable. We know that right now. It can prevent short-term and long-term expenses, although they are expensive right now. But I think it will burden the healthcare system if we don't automate it. We need to automate it and align all the different factors, all the different participants within the healthcare industry. All right, Dr. Rizik, thank you so much for your time. It's my pleasure to talk to you again. <laughs> I'm Mabel Jong. You're watching continuing coverage of the World Healthcare Congress in Washington, D.C.